living a very interesting moment. We have the first signals of a benefit in patients of AML, targeting some, some specific uh, markers. And this is the case for FLIT3 inhibitors. No? We have the first evidence that a FLIT3 inhibitor added to standard chemotherapy uh, results in a benefit for patients. This is a case of mydostaurin. And this has been established in, in the daily clinical practice. It's being established. On the other hand, we have newer FLIT3 inhibitors. Uh, we are listening these days in, in, the, in the meeting, for example, gilterinib that can provide very deep responses, and this, I think, it's very interesting. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, these newcomers are, are going to, to change the, the landscape. Uh, on the other hand, we, there is uncertainty that the mechanism of action of these agents. We don't know if they are beneficial just because of uh, a targeted direct uh, action against FLIP3, or they act most as, uh, as a multi-kinase inhibition. That's something we have to learn in the future. So I think FLIS3 inhibitors, it's uh, one of the, the, the hopes uh, and the beginning of, of many other uh, new drugs against uh, specific targets. This is the case of IDH inhibitors, which show very promising, uh, I would say, results in, in a preliminary, preliminary fashion. Uh, the concept of IDH inhibition is it's very interesting because they do not have off target many of target side effects. They uh, would only affect those uh, cells with the, with the mutation. But by the moment, we do not have solid, robust uh, clinical results. So, so I think this is another example that with a lot of uh, ongoing trials, with a lot of ideas to explore in combination, in monotherapy, as maintenance therapy. So there are a lot of scenarios in which we have to, to try these, these new agents.